What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel for a study guide video on the book of Colossians. I host a Bible reading plan here on YouTube and over on Twitter and we use the hashtag read with Anna to find each other and read in a internet friend community. And we're on the book of Colossians today. I'm filming this on Tuesday morning. It's going up on Tuesday afternoon. And so yeah, I just wanted to share the three themes that I noticed in the book of Colossians and get you excited and inspired to open up your own Bible and read this book for yourself and keep your eyes open for the things that I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me as, my, as I made my way through this book. And I did wanna say that this book is a very special book to me because Colossians 2 verses one through 10 are my mission scripture for my YouTube channel. So we'll get more into that when we talk about the three themes. But the first theme I wanna to talk to you guys about is the theme of your mind. Paul and verse one says that Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Coloss. So that's who wrote it, that's who he's writing it to. And so Paul is addressing the, Col the, the Christians at Coloss and how their mind is an important part of living life, obviously, but how they need to guard it and how they need to not be caught up in deceptive philosophies and how they have a spiritual mind, all these different things. So every time, as you're making your way through these four chapters, be looking for any time that Paul mentions about the mind or understanding or wisdom, because you're really gonna see that emphasized here. And I wanted to read through a few of the verses just to kind of give you like a preview. One verse 21, it says this, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. It goes on and on and on. Then I wanted to jump over to two, chapter two, verses two through four, and it says this, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so they may have the full riches of complete understanding. Complete understanding. That has to do with your mind. Then I want to jump over to two verses, 18 and 19, which says, do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. He has lost connection with the head and the head is capitalized. I'm about to talk about that. From whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows together as God causes it to grow. He's referring to the body of Christ. We as Christians are members of the body of Christ. We make up the body of Christ. Okay. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. He has lost connection with the head. Okay, think about the head, the body of Christ. Okay, the brain, the mind, that's in the head. Like typically, like if you just wanna do a surface level analysis, that's a cool juxtaposition. That's a cool way that the Lord inspired Paul to write and put those words right next to each other, verses 18 and 19. One of the reasons I'm on YouTube has to do with, like I said, Colossians 2, 1 through 10. It is my mission scripture. And it talks about how you can't be, basically like, let's see this, verse four in the NIV. Usually I read it in the NLT to you guys, but it says this. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you with fine sounding arguments. And then if you skip down to verse eight, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human, the NLT says, it comes from human understanding and the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. The next theme that I wanna jump in with you guys, it really ties into this and it's the theme of continue. You're gonna see, if you're reading in the NIV or the NLT, you are going to see, and I'm not sure about other versions, maybe they use the same word, but you're gonna see the word continue a few times. Um, first, you're gonna see it in verse 23, but I'm gonna go ahead and start, I read 21 and 22 to you, but let's just pick up on 23. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. And then if you go over to 2.6, it says this. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. And the New Living Translation says, and now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your lives be built on him. Let your roots grow down into him. And it goes on and on and on. And that is my passion and my heart 
for you guys who are watching these videos. I want you to be established in the truth. I want you to continue to follow Jesus after you get saved. A lot of times Christians get saved and they have some passion and some zeal and it kind of fizzles out and they don't continue in that day-to-day -day living for Jesus building their lives on Jesus, letting their roots grow down into the word of God. Jesus is the word made flesh. And so there's this concept of continuing to develop spiritual maturity. I want to read one more verse that ties into this theme just to point it out to you guys. And there's even more. I'm just skimming the surface. Like I've said in the last few videos, there are other themes in this book. I'm just covering three and there are even more parts to this theme of continuing to develop spiritual maturity in this book, I'm just giving you a couple of verses and highlighting them, but I wanted to read verse 28. It says, we proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The NIV uses the word perfect, but if you look that up in the Greek using Strong's Concordance on biblehub.com, I have a video about how to do that if you're interested, and I'll link it in one of the cards on the screen up here that you can click the little uh, small I button over here and it'll link you straight to that video if you're interested. But um, the word perfect is in Strong's, it's number 5046, it's teleos, I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's Greek, and it means complete, fully grown, mature, okay? So you could read that verse again. To this end, I lay, or, or sorry, I started the wrong verse, verse 28. We proclaim him, Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone complete and fully grown in Christ. That's part of continuing. That's part of developing spiritual maturity, becoming complete, experiencing that full, that full experience of salvation. That's a phrase we've been reading in the last few epistles if you've noticed it. But anyway, that's the second theme. The third theme I want you guys to keep your eyes open for as you're making your way through this book is the theme of the mystery of Christ. If you have a hungry mind, like I have a hungry mind, which means that I like to know, I like to understand, I like to do research, I like to analyze, I like to debate. If you have a hungry mind, guess what? You have to keep that hungry mind on path because human understanding, we talked about this in the continue devotional on Friday, this past Friday, human understanding and human thinking is insufficient in comparison to the understanding, the spiritual understanding, the absolute truth that is provided through the written word of God and the Holy Spirit of God. That's, how, that's talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, and really all throughout scripture. So if you have a hungry mind, you like to explore those mysteries. You like to understand what's going on, but you can get off. You can get misguided. And I wanna read chapter two again. I think I've already covered this, but I want to cover it again. Two verse, uh, let's see. I'm going to read verses two through four. And it says this, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. So they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. If you have that hungry mind I'm talking about, guess where you're gonna find the true and rich treasures of wisdom and knowledge? You're gonna find it in Christ. If you are seeking Jesus, if you wanna know him more, if you are studying the word of God and coming to know God, you're gonna discover the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in Christ. It's the mystery of Christ. Anyway, those are the three themes that I noticed. And like I said, there's some other themes in here, but those are the three themes that were highlighted to me as I read. And I wanted to share them with you and get you excited to open up your Bible and read. So anyway, that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video soon. Okay, bye.